So for the project this week, Intro to Bootstrap Planning, we are going to be doing the design phase of Bootstrap, of a Bootstrap website. And so what that means is that our deliverables do not include code necessarily, but really design documents. Now, if you start with forking uh, the, the project, the Intro to Bootstrap Planning project, you will uh, see that we do have uh, the Watts 3010 Intro to Bootstrap, that we have two parts to this project. And in the first part, we're designing. And in the second part, production, we are implementing. So for module six, for week six, we want to focus on design. And there is a link here to the view of the modern business theme. And our design, we will be using, we will be designing with the idea that our team is implementing in Bootstrap. So we have this um, site that has implemented a number of different layouts and components that you can mix and match to, to build your site. And you will be coming up with your own idea as to what your site is about, who your user or customer is, what their needs are. And then you will be uh, using Bootstrap and Bootstrap components to uh, design the site and then ultimately implement it. So this week, what, we're gonna, so what I want to talk about now is really just the design. Uh, but I encourage you to step through this uh, Start Bootstrap Modern Business website you will only be responsible for implementing four page for designing four pages but i think it's a good idea to look at all of these pages and all of the components on them because like i said you can mix and match you will be creating your own named pages um, but basically the layouts and the components are interchangeable but some of these are are kind of basic pages that you would find in any website for instance in about where you might have a picture of your team or yourself and, and what your business does, services. This could be anything from your, your product, uh, you know, an actual product to a service product and information about how that is uh, distributed. Contacts, you might put a picture of yourself or your team and how to get in touch with you. Portfolios, there's a number of layouts that you can use and this might be a good way to show off um, products or services blogs so this is a good way possibly to have an actual blog or to uh, provide some kind of news service about your product and then other pages just give you a number of other layouts um, that you can use so you have various kind of collapsible um, you're going to be required to put to, to fix this 404 page which just it's shown when when something can't be found. Pricing table, you might want to rework this to show prices. So I definitely think just you want to start by looking through this uh, this modern business theme bootstrap um, and refer back to it as you're doing your design. So you will be creating um, a set of documents and let me talk more about that. So what we're actually going to deliver if you look here, I'm showing you my design docs directory. Uh, so in the in the Watts 3010 Intro to Bootstrap, there is a design docs directory that comes with a design readme. That is just basically a filler uh, page so that GitHub can keep this design docs folder available. And what you're going to be creating in there are the requirements are a an actual design doc PDF and we'll talk more about that um, and information architecture document we'll talk more about that um, and a wireframe document so this will provide a wireframe layout and we will talk more about that so these are really the three requirements and then a stretch would be comps which is where you actually kind of mock up a page or some pages and provide that as well. But in general, you're not focusing on actually implementing Bootstrap. You're really focusing on the three documents, the design document, the wireframes, and the, um, 
information architecture, and you can actually merge those all into one document, uh, all of the content there into one document if you want. So first let's take a closer look at the design document. And again, you can merge your diagrams into this and, and format it as you want. But the parts that we want to see, we want to see the title of the course or the uh, assignment. We want you to give us the name of your company or website. Uh, uh, we want to see your design concept. So I've got this wine shop and it's a custom shop that is a front for a winery that wants to emphasize process of making wine from the grape to drinking experience. So this is kind of use your imagination or maybe you have a real customer that you want to prepare a website for uh, but you want to come up with a design concept and approach and then you want to uh, describe what you hope to accomplish with this design concept and again here I want to increase interest in wine. I want to draw customers into the shop, create a community of repeat customers. And then we want to provide some websites that we use for inspiration. So these would be websites that you looked at. Possibly you want to Google um, bootstrap examples and see other bootstrap websites or just any website, things that design ideas that you like. Although I would say in, in putting together its design, you do want to keep in mind that you're designing for a bootstrap implementation. So you want to focus on bootstrap layouts and bootstrap components. And you also want to keep your scope narrow enough so that you are not overworking yourself. You would, it's better to do a really nice job on four pages than to do 10 pages but become really scattered. And then you want to show some websites for comparable businesses. So just some comparisons there. And finally, you want to look at your target audience, your demographics, and you know, age, gender, interest, and then motivations, why they would come to your website or be interested in your company. All right, so for your information architecture deliverable, you're going to create a diagram like this. And you're going to be reading about this uh, so I won't go too into too much detail about all the things that you might do. But in this assignment where you're only required to create four pages, I expect this diagram will look something similar to what I've got here. And basically it just shows the pages that you're creating and then um, how they link to each other. And this will ultimately get reflected in the navigation that you design and um, it, it, it indicates how you're organizing the information in your site. So uh, basically we just again list uh, the, the course, the name of our company, what type of diagram this is, and um, you and, and so I want to show you how I created this particular diagram and there are a number of tools you can use. I am using Lucidchart which allows me to create for free um, and I, it creates, and I create, I'm just using a flow charting diagram. There's a number of free tools. They're listed in your um, resources that you can try out. In fact, you can even do this by hand and take a picture and put the picture into a PDF. But I really recommend looking into some of the tools available because ultimately when you're working, you will want to deliver um, diagrams that are created in a way that they look professional and and using these tools can also help you to design. It's kind of a funny thing when you're working with these design tools they kind of inspire you to think about what you want to do. You can also do it on paper and in fact before I even come to a tool I usually sketch a little on paper but this is a nice tool because especially if you're just doing something like this where you have just rectangles and arrows you can basically just um, drag uh, these rectangles over, set up your name, uh, and then the nice thing about Lucidchart compared to like say Draw.io that I've also used is that it's really easy to draw the arrows and you're not limited to where you draw them from. You Sometimes you can only draw like four arrows on a box. This is much, much more forgiving and easier to work with. So I, I recommend this product. It's, it's, it is fairly easy to work with. 
but again, uh, I could show you one student, um, and this is perfectly acceptable, turned in a hand-drawn IA. And that's, that's fine if you want to do it like that, you can. But again, there is some value if you have the time to looking into some of these online tools. And once you've created a diagram like this, it's, you can either uh, download it as a PDF or a PNG. Uh, and again, you know, PNGs are the recommended format for line drawings. They are non-lossy, and these are usually small amounts of data. So that would be if you wanted to put it out like that. Um, and then you could incorporate it into a document. You can also put it straight out as a PDF, as I did, and just deliver it as a, second, a separate document. So that's up to you. Let's take a look at the wireframe. So this is just a PDF of a set of wireframes that I created uh, for a couple of pages. And basically, what you're seeing here is I have this idea of a top wine HTML, which is going to um, be available in two formats. And Bootstrap will pretty much take care of that. You'll see how that works as we get into programming with Bootstrap. Um, but we will have a view that you might see on a desktop, a large screen view. And then there will be a narrower view where basically we sort of verticalize all of our components that you might see on the uh, on a on a mobile or a, on a, like a iPad. So um, let me show you how I put this together. And again, this is all in one PDF, but you could be exporting these as uh, graphics files and uh, ping files and then you could incorporate them into a document. So what I used for this was Balsamic app, the Balsamic app. Um, you can see here I've already created a couple of wireframes, the top lines and um, <clears throat> the, the mobile version. So what's going on with a wireframe is you're not trying to really show exactly what the component looks like, but there's sort of implied uh, components by certain visuals. So in this case right here, we have a menu, and I'm showing the brand here, and then the menu items. And here I have a, um, a book, uh, uh, breadcrumb. And these are all, these are both components that you can code using Bootstrap. And then here I've got this, this figure always represents a, an image, so a picture that, I, that I've loaded on the page. And here I've got a header. And then here I've got, um, they're called groups here. Um, and then um, I would probably code them as cards. And here I've got a tab set. And then finally I've got a footer where I, I'm putting my, my copyright. Uh, and then uh, in this view, um, and this these wireframes, the purpose of them is to, the designer would put them together based on knowledge of what the user is expecting, um, what the data is going to look like, and deliver it to the developer who would then turn it into an actual working page. And over here in the notes section, I can uh, tell the developer, oh look, this is based on the service HTML template that we both know you have access to. The photo is a 960 by 640 pixel. Um, and, the and the name of the page is uh, Top Wine. And so all of this is part of what the designer puts together. Uh, I also have this page here where I am um, having, I'm setting up what the, my blog is going to look like. So again, I've got my nav bar, my my uh, breadcrumbs, a header, a smaller photo, and some text. Uh, in this assignment, you won't be responsible for really creating any real text. It will all be the Lauren Ipsum, you know, uh, text. So, but you will be putting out 
real text, but in the boot, in the wireframe, it just looks like a picture of text. So let's look at how you would go about making another wireframe from, and you can start from scratch. So I could say plus, and then I could start dragging pieces onto this and lining them up. If I if I wanted to, if I knew exactly what I wanted, like menu, I could go up to the search and find different types of menus and bring those in there. Let's see, that's coming box. Let's say like. So this is how you use a tool like this. And there are several tools that are mentioned. Um, and you can try out a few of them. This is actually a pretty easy to use tool. Um, so you can arrange things the way you want. So that's one way that you can make one. And the other way is you, if you have an existing one and you're, say for instance, I was going from the full page view to the mobile view where the pieces are basically the same, they're just arranged different, I can actually right click and duplicate. And so that gives me the ability. So for instance, on this blog, I could do a duplicate and you can see it created blog copy and I can rename that to blog like blog mobile and it's not that I'm creating a, really a new HTML I'm just gonna label it like that and then in blog mobile um, this uh, menu would be a lot narrower we would see more we would see these items more lined up underneath each other just following kind of the standard patterns of, of displaying mobile content so so it's actually fairly straightforward to put together one of these um, you know it takes some some thought up front and I'll just save that to um, figure out what you want, what content you want, and what type of component you want. But once you have that, you can use these uh, little pictures to help show what your design is. And when you're all ready, in this example, in this tool, you can export to Ping, or you can export directly to PDF. So Ping, again, because we're, we've got wireframe, uh, these are drawings. We can use a non-lossy type of um, image. Um, in general, uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about images, but with images you want to use ping formats for drawings and JPEGs for photos. So yeah, you can export either to PDF or to um, ping files and then incorporate them into a document and save that as a PDF. So hope that helps on creating the wireframes. While we're talking about wireframes, I just want to mention another type of design product, which is our comps. And comps are kind of the next step in wireframes, where wireframes are just black and white and symbolic. In comps, you start to flush out the design a little bit more so that if you're showing your design products to a customer, you have the ability to give them a better feel for what your web pages are going to look like. So I have a comps document that's just focused on looking at how my home page is going to look at different device levels. So I've got the desktop, the tablet, where I've got the uh, collapsed nav bar, and then the phone with the further uh, smaller size collapsed nav bar. So comps are another way that you can demonstrate your design to the customer. Finally, uh, in addition to um, providing the design docs for this assignment, you're going to provide the images that you're going to be using. So in the modern business design, you'll notice here we have a carousel. And you will be coding for this, in, this index page. So you're going to need photos to go into your carousel. These are large photos um, that are going to fill this uh, space here. This is 1900 by 1080. Um, and 
You're also going to need photos if you, for instance, have a service and you want to have a large photo like that, or if you are going to have photos for, say, that show your products. So you're going to be putting together photos. Maybe in the About page you've got some photos that you want to show that represent the team that is behind this website or the employees of the company that you're writing about. So you're going to have a number of photos and that's part of the delivery is to fill this image with the photos that you need. Now how can you get those photos? The way I would recommend is you go to Google Images and let's just say I have my wine shop and I needed to find photos that had to do with wine. Now when you go into Google you want, there's a couple things that you can do with these tools that will really help you one of them is usage rights and I like to pick labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification and this means that I can take these images, I can uh, change their sizes, I could even change colors and whatnot. So I, I pick the usage rights with non-commercial or even better pick com um, labeled even for commercial if say somehow you ever wanted to use it for a real uh, site. And then in the size you can use this larger than, you can actually pick exactly but that limits you quite a bit. Um, so we're trying to pick a fairly large picture, 1024, 768. And so you can see I did get some photos here and these all fit my criteria. I mean you can look and see there's there are other uh, criteria that you can pick. But I think these two are pretty important. And then I might um, say, okay, I like this photo. I want to put it in my carousel. And then I will go find the photo and I will download it. So let's say this is my test photo. And this is going to come in as a JPEG. Go to my download. Now um, let's say I want to do some resizing. So I will go and take a look at this photo. Now if you're in Windows, when you uh, right click and edit, it will take you into Paint. Um, here in, on the Mac, I can click on that and it opens up Preview. And if I want to do some resizing, I can go into the Tools, Adjust Size, and you can see as it pops up, it's showing me in pixels and you'll notice there's different uh, units there, but I do usually do sizing in pixels. I want to pick this scale proportionally. In Windows, I think it says maintain aspect ratio. Um, and uh, let's just say I want to get this down around, I think it was 1080. And I would say OK and and then it will be uh, saved for me like that. So now, um, let's see if I save it. Um, now when I, I will, I can just, you know, I, in fact, sometimes when I save it, I might want to include those numbers. So let's, let me just take a look again, the tools. Adjust size, so 1080 by 720, and they typically come with by height. So let's do that file, save, let's see, file, rename, and we'll make it 1080, 720. This will just help me to remember that this, the size that I intended for that file. So, and in general, there's, there's not like a science to this so much as uh, you want to pick a size that's going to uh, fit where you're going to be putting it on the page. Um, you know, you'll be putting it in a div. You may size that div, uh, but you want to have it not look, you know, go by the aesthetics that it, that it looks okay. A couple things to point out in sizing, and you're going to get more into this when we start actually coding with Bootstrap, but there are um, 
websites out there that show you the sizes of different devices. So here's one. It's called um, Screen Sizes. ScreenSize.es. And with this, you can see it lists all of the many, many devices. And you so you can look at this. And this width height is kind of the important breakdown. And as we get into responsive coding with Bootstrap, you will see that this, you know, this kind of takes over, showing you um, what size you are dealing with in terms of your viewport. And we'll talk more about that when we get into coding. But one of the key numbers that I keep in mind is the uh, the size of the iPad. Mini, I think that's what it is, the iPad Mini 768. That turns out to be a number that we key off of a lot, that's sort of a breaking point between desk size and the next smaller size. Sometimes you might even go to a third, so you kind of think in terms of desk, uh, tablet, and phone. But this this gives you kind of an idea of the sizes that you have to work with. But again, I would use, you know, just kind of eyeball it, um, you know, what looks decent to you. So that's how I might uh, go about working with, with pictures. One important thing to know about gathering together images is that you, you will start to accumulate a lot of them and keeping them organized can help you when you go to implement. So you can see I have an Im the images folder here and this is the one created for me by the repo that I forked. Um, and so what I've done is I've, I've kind of uh, created subfolders for carousel and I've got the images here that I'm going to put into the carousel. So when I go to implement it's going to be really easy to find them and uh, I've got some images for the portfolio started. And so as I create images and I work on them and get them ready for the page, I can just put them into these folders where they're going to end up. And um, I also sometimes will keep a folder of raw images. These are ones that I haven't modified in case I want to go back and rework them. So keeping your images, uh, sometimes you might want to name them with the size of the image as we demonstrated earlier and, and sometimes you can just name them in a way that will make um, implementing the components a lot easier so that this just shows that type of organization. One other type of design document that can really help out is a task list and here I'm showing it's it's not doesn't have to be any particular format just whatever works for you, but it will help you to organize your ideas about what you will be creating. And that can really speed up the implementation too. Um, also, if you're doing this for somebody else and you're charging them money, this kind of work can help justify whatever you're charging them. So, or if you're working for a company and you're charging time, this is the type of information that you need to provide for that. So thinking about a task list and providing that as one of your design documents can be really helpful. All right, so having a good set of design documents and an organized folder for your images is going to really help speed up what goes on in the implementation week. It'll give you more time to focus on learning Bootstrap and being able to lay out your, your web pages and set up the components properly. Just want to remind you that for full credit on this assignment, some of these are listed as stretch, but you really do need to have four documents in your design packet. So these are some examples, um, and I look forward to seeing what you guys produce.